My name is Zane Richards. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I wrestled for the University of Illinois in 2012 to 2017, two-time All-American. And I wrestle for the Illinois Regional Training Center, and I'm a 2023 World Team member. Most of my life throughout my college career and a good portion of my senior level career in wrestling was me trying to make my own decisions. I had good mentors around me. I knew that that was important. Uh, I believed in good Christian values, but I never really took that step into letting Christ actually dictate what I do in life. You know, after uh, a breakup in a relationship, it just dawned on me that I'm really sick and tired of hurting people and just not being the man that I know I could be. Personally, I felt like a failure. It just felt like I wasn't ever good enough and a light bulb went off and realized that going to church and, and being a follower of Jesus Christ is really the last thing that I haven't tried. As a Christian coach, you know, you want people to follow Christ. You want, because you believe in the gospel. You believe in, you know, what's, what, what we believe is true, you know, and, it, and what it's done for us. And, you know, I fully believe God controls everything, you know, and he, he, he put pieces in place for Zane without Zane knowing, without anybody else understanding, you know, Robbie Gwynn coming in and, and speaking to the team at the exact same time that, that Zane's interest was peaked. When I first started coming into the Illini wrestling room, I saw Zane and he was definitely pretty serious, focused, wasn't necessarily the most warm guy up front, but, but that was fine with me. Like anyone who you don't see in the wrestling room before, if you're a wrestler, you're just like, who's this guy? You know, who's this tough guy I think he is coming into my territory? Coach Medlin said, hey, I think Zane would be a great guy for you to connect with. And I said, sounds good. This guy kept coming back. Every, almost every other practice, every practice, I'm seeing this guy hanging out in our sweaty, smelly wrestling room. You know, that reminded me of some of my mentors in the past, like BJ Futrell and Eric Terrazas, who'd been here before. Like, oh, but we actually have a, you know, a guy from FCA working with us, which is great. You know, I thought it was cool. So we get some life lessons on the side. That's always good for wrestling, why not? He's not really a wrestling guy, but he put himself out there. Over time, I started to realize how dedicated he was to this cause of getting Jesus Christ to our wrestling team here at U of I. And seeing that was inspirational and it was uh, really encouraging. I think their relationship really helped with Zane's overall view of what Christian life is all about. Each step I took closer to God, I felt his presence more and more working through me. And I knew this is real. This is 100% true. There's, you know, there's nothing else like it in the universe. It was pretty impressive to see almost night and day, the relief, just the anxiety of the world, anxiety of wrestling and all that just kind of disappear. I think the biggest thing is that he wanted to read the Bible. And that's my hope is that everyone would investigate Jesus. And from then on, I said, hey, do you just want to start meeting up on a, on a regular basis? And let's read who Jesus said who he was, because he said some pretty radical claims. And he said, yeah, let's do it. One of the big questions I had for him early on uh, and was answered pretty thoroughly was, you know, how can I be a man and still follow Jesus Christ? Because modern day culture has this tainted view of who Jesus is, where he's this really soft, overly loving, polite guy. And Robbie points out really quickly, like he's not this at all. You know, he, yeah, he loves you and he's compassionate for you, but he also is very stern and he sets a, a very high standard for what he expects us to live and, and life's to lead. And he tells us many times in scripture when we don't meet that standard and it's, it's abrasive, it's abrupt and it's, you know, hardcore coming to that realization like, oh, you can be a macho dude wrestling and, and have this lifestyle. And, you know, once Robbie told that to me, realizing who the other Christian leaders in the wrestling world are, like Bill Zadig, Brian Medlin, my coach, Kyle Snyder, a great champion, everything points back to Jesus Christ as the one that actually leads their lives and gives them strength and power to go about their daily, you know, lives and, and be fulfilled. Zane is a hero to these guys. In the past year, he's beaten some superstars of wrestling. So I think 
you know, when, when he tells people, because he's not shy about it, why that is, that definitely piques the interest of that freshman that's coming in that maybe, you know, hasn't heard the gospel. You know, that hasn't heard a good testimony up to this point of his life. And they reach out to him more and, you know, he's he's been very vocal about where his where his power is coming from. So it's a good relationship because I feel like it's strengthened our team, you know, and and you know, grown God's kingdom. Through Zane and my relationship, I hope that I just made the Christian walk a little bit more simple. Sometimes we can overcomplicate things, but really God wants to have a relationship through us. He initiated, he recruited that relationship. We just need to accept it, trust it, to receive that free gift of salvation. And then we get to enjoy the fruit of the Spirit, that as we listen to the scriptures and then try to apply it to our life and to obey Him, then He makes us more like Him. I've been going to regular prayer meetings weekly with uh, some of the leaders in my church, Robbie Gwynn being one of them, my, my pastor. I wanted to get closer to God, but then I also asked them, and I said even, you know, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but I've never been baptized. And that's something I want to get done. And they're all like, absolutely, brother, let's go. You know, they're, they're excited. And it was like, you got invited to wrestle at the World Championships in their eyes. You know, that's how pumped these guys were. And it was that moment I realized, oh, this is a big deal. I've watched his journey. I'm so proud of him. He's all in, he believes it, he shouts it. Anybody that puts a microphone in front of his face, he tells them. And it's, it's such an amazing event that's going to take place. This is another step, and I can't wait to see even what this brings. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be part of that kingdom for all eternity. Your sins are washed away. You're made new, a child of God. That's going to be on display in a couple minutes. And whatever questions you face, he's got answers and so much more than that for you. Baptism is the outward expression of our relationship with Jesus Christ. It's that moment where you've been saved and it's letting the world know that you've come to that moment. Much like a wedding ring, you can take the wedding ring off. It doesn't mean you're not married. And I don't need to be baptized to know I'm saved by the Lord. But at the same time, it's good to show the world that you are. You know, this is a life-changing moment and it's already happened. I'm already saved by the Lord. I've already accepted Him. But to visibly show the world this and to let people know that, no, Jesus is my Lord and you need to see this. Zane, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes. Do you believe that He died for you to pay for all your sin? Absolutely. Do you believe that he rose from the dead so that you will be raised to new life? Of course. Based on your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.